Hey guys, this week I went to Walmart and I picked up five supplies to paint this sofa table. I wanted to see if I could paint a professional looking brush free finish using only products that you can get at Walmart. I grabbed some Waverly chalk paint, a best two inch paintbrush, some gator sandpaper, clear shellac, and Minwax polycrylic. Here's what the table looked like before. It's an oak veneered sofa table that was actually made in China. And upon closer inspection, it looks like it was refinished pretty recently, so it was in pretty good condition. But holy moly, that stain is so orange. So first I removed the hardware from the drawers. There's actually only one drawer on here, even though it looks like there are three. So I had to flip over the table to get the hardware off of the fake drawers. Then, just like with every other time I paint furniture, I wiped it down really, really well to remove any gunk, dirt, or grease that could be on it. But, instead of using my typical crud cutter that I love, I opted to wipe it down with an old rag and some Dawn dish soap that was in a bucket of hot water. I'm telling you, this makeover is really taking everything back to the basics, the cheapest way to get a high-end looking finish, hopefully. After I scrubbed the table with hot soapy water, I wiped it down again, just rinsing off any soapy residue that might have been left behind. Then I dried it all off before moving to the next step. Next I tore up the 220 grit sandpaper just into quarters and then I scuff sanded the table all over. I didn't want to sand through the old finish though. I just sanded enough to dull the finish and give the paint something to hold on to. So basically just a few passes back and forth over the whole thing. It took me about 20 minutes to scuff sand the whole thing, and then I used my vacuum to suck up all of the dust, and then I used a rag to wipe off any dust that was left behind. Then we moved the table out to the garage to give it two coats of primer, letting it dry for at least an hour before I painted over it. In this case, the primer is the clear shellac. It's actually what I use on probably 80% of my makeovers, and it definitely serves a purpose or two, so even though it's stinky, I don't ever skip over some sort of primer anymore. First and foremost, I use clear shellac to prevent bleed through. And if you've never painted wood before, you probably have no idea what bleed through is, but let me tell you, it is a big pain. Basically, bleed through is when wood tannins or the dye in the stain bleed through your paint. So it looks like orange or pink splotches in your paint job, but no matter how many coats of paint you put over it, it won't go away. Shellac is one of the only things that will actually block bleed through. You can get shellac primer that is tinted white, but I love to use the clear shellac so I can distress the paint a little. I also like the spray can instead of brushing it on because it goes so much faster than brushing. Sometimes I joke that the piece looks exactly the same as it used to at this point because the shellac creates a bit of a shiny finish, but I promise the shellac actually helps the paint stick better even though it looks shiny again. After the last coat of shellac dried for an hour, we moved it back inside to paint. I chose this Waverly Chalky paint in the color Moss. Since I really wanted a brush free finish, I added a little bit of water to the paint. So I poured about a third of the container of paint into a separate plastic bowl. Then I added some water to the paint and I mixed it up. The water thins the paint out a little bit and makes the paint dry slower, which gives it more time to flatten out leaving less brush marks behind. At least that's what I hope will happen with this paint. Then I brush the paint onto the table with this best two inch brush from Walmart. I wanted to use a brush that was a little nicer to help minimize any brush marks, so I didn't go with the very cheapest option. When I brushed on the paint, I tried to only brush the paint on with the direction of the wood grain in really long strokes. I also didn't load the paintbrush with very much paint to help avoid any drips that might happen because of too much paint in one area. And then I was on the constant lookout for any drips that did happen so I could catch them and brush them out before the paint dried. When I got to the drawer, I removed it and painted it on its own. Since I couldn't afford any tape for this project, I was really, really careful to only get paint on the drawer front and not on any other part of the drawer. By the time I got around to the drawer, the paint on the table where the drawer goes was dry, so I just put the drawer back into the table to let it dry. When I got to the legs, I actually went against the grain to apply the paint. 
I found that it's easiest to brush horizontally and kind of slap it on instead of going with the grain. But if you do this, be really careful to not have very much paint on your brush because paint can easily go flying once you start slapping. Trust me, there are paint splatters on my wall. The crazy thing is that brush marks are pretty much non-existent, even going against the grain on the legs here. So I slowly just made my way around the whole entire table until there was a coat of paint all over it. Honestly, I was pretty impressed with the coverage, especially for the price and the fact that I thinned it out a bit. Just like with most paint, I had to paint two coats, but that is totally normal. After the first coat, I just wrapped the paintbrush in some plastic wrap just to keep it moist until I could paint the second coat. I came back about an hour later to put on the second coat of paint. And then I basically just painted it like I had the first coat. Each coat took about 20 to 25 minutes to paint. I let this second coat of chalky paint dry completely before I moved on to sealing the paint. I chose this Minwax Polycrylic to seal the chalk paint. I chose this Minwax Polycrylic because I wanted to be able to spray the poly on. I personally hate brushing on poly and it's so hard to get a really nice streak free finish when you brush it on. So I typically spray my poly on with my paint sprayer, but since I couldn't use it on this makeover, I opted for the spray can. Side note though, I typically only use Verithane's brand of water-based polyurethane in the cork can. I love that stuff. But a few months ago, I used the Verithane oil-based polyurethane in a spray can and multiple cans of it spit really, really bad when I sprayed it. So I went and got Minwax's oil-based polyurethane in a spray can and it sprayed beautifully as always. So this time around, I didn't want to use the Verithane brand of poly in a spray can because I didn't want it to spit everywhere on me. I was pretty sure I could trust Minwax's spray can more. Anyway, I sprayed three coats of polycrylic on this table, letting it dry for about 45 minutes between coats. Between the first and second coat, I lightly sanded it smooth with the 320 grit sandpaper to distress the paint a little bit more, but mostly to make it feel really smooth. Before I sprayed any poly, I shook the can really, really well for two minutes, and then I kept the spray can about 12 inches away from the table. I kept the coats of poly really thin so there wouldn't be drips. In the end though, I really like how this Minwax Polycrylic sprayed. This satin sheen looks really, really good over this chalk paint. So here's what the sofa table looks like now. I ended up putting some cup pulls on the drawers instead of the old hardware. I just think updating the hardware goes a really, really long way in giving a piece of furniture a fresh new look. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty impressed with how good of a finish these cheap products made. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe for more helpful videos just like this.